Well, hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this week's uh, Bible lesson. Um, this week and next week, we're taking a step away from our, our uh, uh, Answers in Genesis study that we've been doing. Uh, we're still with Answers in Genesis, but uh, we're going to be doing uh, a, couple, uh, a couple Christmas lessons uh, this week and next week. Um, just kind of go along with the theme of Christmas. Um, and then after, of course, after the Christmas season, uh, we'll get back after Christmas holiday. We'll get back into our lesson 108 of our um, Answers in Genesis program that we've been doing. But uh, this week we're going to do something a little different. Um, still scriptures. Uh, I've got a lot of scriptures written on the board that we're going to be reading from today. Um, as you can see at the top, uh, the title of our lesson this week is Jesus Before the Manger. Um, a lot of times when uh, you make mention of Jesus or you ask a lot of folks, who is Jesus? When was, when, when was he? Uh, who is Jesus? And the, the, the answer you get is, well, he's the baby who was born in a manger. And that is true for the, some part. Um, while that is true, Jesus was before the manger. Jesus is and always was as part of the triune Godhead, as part of the Trinity. Um, he was in the beginning with God. And those are things we're going to get into this morning. That's, that's, again, uh, I've heard it said by people also um, uh, praying to a baby Jesus or, or uh, referring to him as a, a man who lived 33 years on the earth and then um, uh, died for our sins and that was it. Uh, but we've got to understand that Jesus is eternal. Um, as being part of the triune Godhead, Jesus is eternal. Um, he is eternal. He always was and always will be. Um, we're going to read this morning. He was present at creation. Um, and all throughout uh, Old Testament, when you hear of the angel of the Lord, a lot of times, uh, in a lot of those instances, the angel of the Lord is God himself. Uh, in 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 witnessing to the folks of the Old Testament, to the, the, the children of Israel. And so when you hear of God, uh, in many instances, being that this is, when you looked upon God, when you've heard from God, you've heard from Christ himself, Jesus Christ. Um, but as we know, the story we know, he left heaven, uh, was born as a baby. Um, he was, why was he born? To fulfill God's promise, to send the Savior. Um, lived a perfect life. Conquer death, um, and has returned into heaven where he is preparing a place um, for all of God's children, all of God's those that call on Christ, those that believe in the Lord and Savior and salvation of Jesus Christ. Um, this morning, so before we get into our lesson, we're going to uh, open with prayer and ask God into our, our Bible reading this morning. Father Lord God, we love you and thank you to God. I give you praise. I worship you to God, Lord, this morning. I thank you for your word. To God, I thank you for sending your son to God, Lord, to die on that cross, dear Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for this lesson we're going to get into this morning, dear God. Lord, for the freedom we have uh, to gather uh, wherever we are, dear God, Lord, in your word. Not hiding um, in closets to try to hide the word, but God, we're able to freely open it this morning. And I praise you for that. Dear God, Lord, I pray that you would uh, open our hearts this morning as we get into your word, as we get into the study of your son, Jesus Christ, dear God, Lord, that you would open our minds to to comprehend this this eternal Christ that we're going to speak of, dear God, Lord, and you would draw us closer to you, dear God, Lord, through this Christmas season, dear God, that we don't look on you as just a babe in a manger, but so much more than that. And God, through it all, I'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' holy name, Amen. So again, title of our lesson this morning: uh, Jesus Before the Manger. Um, again, when you ask a lot of folks. Um, to describe Jesus, they'll start with the, the, the very familiar story that we all know. The young babe that was born in a manger, um, who grew, um, and offered himself a sacrifice to save the sin, sins of man, lived 33 years and died. That's, that's what you get in the Jesus story. Um, but he was so much more than that. Um, today we read that he's going to be the real deal. He was the creator incarnate. The God-man, the one who came to save his people from their sins, fulfilling the promises God had made since the beginning of time. Uh, as we're going to read in Genesis 1.1, um, he did not begin as a babe in a manger. Jesus Christ, he did not begin as a babe in a manger. Um, well, first I want to get into Colossians. Before we get into Genesis 1.1, let's get into Colossians 
uh, chapter 1, verse 16 through 20. Colossians 1, 16 through 20. My Bible will turn to it here. Colossians 1, 16 through 20. So, um, again, we've gotten to understand that Jesus always existed. He was not um, born in a manger on Christmas as we celebrate so many times. So many, uh, we celebrate the birth of Christ, yes, but he was more than just that. He always was, always has been, always will be as part of the deity of God um, throughout all eternity. Um, he was there uh, when, they, when the stars were created. He was there when the earth, uh, the, 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 the life was, uh, when uh, life was uh, breathed into a lump of dust, he was there. Um, always planning, um, Christ was always planning his entrance into time for his death. Uh, we're going to read Colossians 1, 16 through 20. Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. This is, this is our, this is, this is Christ now. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Um, that right there, that very, that very scripture we just read, for, for by him, verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. There, that very scripture that we just read is, uh, God's word explaining to us that Christ was, Christ is, and Christ always will be. Um, he was in the beginning when everything was created. Um, sorry, let me get turn here. I got a lot to try to cover this morning, so I apologize. I'm going to be kind of moving along here, but um, a lot I want to try to get in. Um, so we celebrate Christmas um, as the birthday of Jesus. That's what we know Christmas as, the birthday of Jesus. Uh, December 25th represents the day that God stepped down in humanity and took on flesh as Jesus our Savior. We all know this. Um, but also while we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we also, if we are intentional in our celebration, should be also celebrating the life, death, and resurrection of the Savior. Not just the birth, not just Christmas. Um, the baby in a manger. Um, Christmas is just the beginning of it. Um, uh, one thing I, I we're doing this year with my, within my own family um, is each day, and I've seen this on Facebook and thought it would be a great way to kind of bring, keep Christ into the center of our celebration this year, of our celebration this season, is uh, each day of the month, beginning with December 1st, we read, read a chapter of Luke. Um, and of course, by the end of December 24th, you've read all 24 chapters of Luke, and you have a, a good picture of the life of Christ um, that we understand that he is not just the babe in a manger. He is so much more than that. Um, today we're going to look at the idea of eternality. Eternal. Um, not, but we're also going to look at eternal past, and we're going to look at eternal future. Um, again, Christmas is not the beginning at all. Christ took the form of man and accepted the name Jesus, but that event, while significant, was not the beginning of the Son or the redemptive plan. Uh, Genesis 1.1, Jesus as eternal creator. Genesis 1.1. Let's read that together. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1 again. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 
So, um, what we've learned, what we what we know so far. Um, what role did Jesus play? I'm, I'm going to ask this. What role did Jesus play in the time prior to his incarnation? What role, again, people don't think of Jesus as before his birth. They don't realize that Jesus was before his birth. What role did he play? So if he was before, if he was always, what role did he play? Um, a lot of people don't think of him as a real person until he was born. Um, the conception the truth is that the conception of Jesus is not a beginning of existence, but an incarnation. It is simply the moment that God the Son assumes a bodily flesh, a, a body of flesh. Um, so before his birth, what was he doing? Uh, verse 1, what three facts are we given in, what, in the verse we just read? He is a creator. Um, uh, God is a creator. We see that he created the heavens and the earth. And he re we see that he created it when? In the beginning. Now, if I took those three words in the beginning, um, this is what we got to understand. And I, let me let, let, just hold those three words off and just read verse 1 again. It says, God created the heaven and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. Why is in the beginning so much so important to this? Um, leaving those three words out in the beginning. God was, we got to understand that God was before time. Um, and it's hard for us to process this because all we've ever known is time. All we've known is uh, the milliseconds, the seconds, the moments in life, in time. But we've got to understand that God was before time. God is and God was. He, he was um, within himself. He was not created by anything else. God was before time. Um, without that, without those three words in the beginning, we, we're missing the aspect of time. Um, all creation exists within the structure that we call time. Um, who created time? God. Um, so if God created time, that means he is outside of time. He is not bound by the finite structure of one moment. He's not bound by, again, our, what we what we look upon as the, the, the second hand, the millisecond hand even, on a clock. God is not bound by that. God is not bound by beginning and end. He always was and always will be. Um, and again, it's hard for us to wrap our head around, but we've got to understand that if God was before time, so is our Lord Jesus Savior. So is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, let's read John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. This is another uh, example of Christ and who Christ was, who Christ is. And that Christ is another example of Christ was always was in the beginning. Um, John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was that was made. Um, what or who? What or who is the Word in this passage? That's what we've got to understand. When it refers to the Word, you know, I'll write this out. Capital W, as we see in our passage, is it's not. Well, I just messed my marker up. Maybe. So when we refer to the Word in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who or what is the Word? Obviously, we know the Word is referring to Jesus. Um, you say, well, how do you know that? Well, let's go down to John, same, same, same chapter, same chapter 1. Well, let's go down to verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14 tells us, And the Word, again, it's a capital W, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of, as of the only begotten of the, Father, of the Father, full of grace and truth. So right there, that tells us the Word was Jesus Christ. Um, because it says it became flesh and He dwelt among us, and that's, that's our Lord and Savior. Verse 15, 
John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Uh, uh, John's witness of this, John's witness of, 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 of Christ supports what we believe to be uh, the word of Jesus Christ. And then verse 17. Let's read verse 17. Uh, for the law was given by Moses, same chapter, John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Um, verse 17, what did verse 17 tell us? He was named, right there he is named. The word was given, or uh, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ the word um, what do we learn about the word from this passage he is God I mean verse verse one the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so what do we learn he is God he was with God and all things were made through him all right so that's what we know so right there is Jesus Christ as we know him as the word was in the beginning um, this also reveals uh, the plurality of God, um, what we call the triune nature of God, uh, Trinity, within itself. Um, John chapter 1, verse 1 explains that the Word was with God and was God. Jesus is God. But the first is just as important. Jesus is God, but he was also with God in the beginning, indicating that he is distinct from God. Now this is, we must be careful to hold both truths in tandem. In other words, um, that we keep, we, we can't think of um, Jesus as being distinct from God too much because that leads to polytheism. Polytheism is the worship of more than one God. Now you're creating two separate beings and that is not what we, uh, that is not what our, uh, our God is. He's not two or three separate beings. Um, but we got to be careful also um, that we don't put an emphasis on just Jesus um, as himself, as, as one, because model, that, that leads to modelism. Modelism is the belief that God is a single person. Or modelism is the belief that God is a single person who manifests himself in different roles. God is a single being. God is a single being with three distinct persons. Um, both Genesis 1 and John 1 reveal that God is self-existent. We refer to this characteristic as the aseity of God. Aseity is the, the, the definition of aseity, the quality or state of being self-derived or self-originated. The aseity of God. God, again, it's hard for us to imagine this because all we know is time. Um, but to think to the beginning before everything, there was God. He was. Nothing created him. He was there. He was just there. He is, still is today. Um, he has no origin. Um, he needs nothing to exist. That's exactly what the ascetic of God means. He is absolutely self-sufficient and independent. Um, and again, we say, well, what does this have to do with everything? Anything? This shows the eternality of God. Um, he is eternal. He, needs, he, he does not know time. Time is not within uh, him. Now, uh, we're going to get into... Uh, Obviously, when Christ came down, there was time. God stepped into time by offering his son, Jesus Christ, in that form to come down. And he stepped into time um, to, to die for our sins. That's something we know. But God and his, is, is eternal. He is Because there is no time within him, he simply is. And that's what we've got to faithfully believe. That's what we've just read. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Um, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. And I'm in John chapter 1. Verse 3. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. As the second person of the triune Godhead, Jesus bears the same divine attributes as both the Father and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Jesus has the same aseity and eternality. Although we often think of Jesus as be beginning along with his human life, he already existed as the Son before time was created. Think of that. Although we often think of Jesus as beginning along with his human life. Again, 
We own, a lot of us think Jesus came into the picture at the birth. But what we've just read, what John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us is he already existed as a son before time was ever even created. Um, and the passage just told us that we just read that uh, through Christ, all things have been created. That means that he was there in the beginning with God was Jesus Christ. Something to think about. I mean, again, for so many people, the Christmas season is Jesus, baby in the manger, lion. Uh, and we all know the very familiar story of um, the angel's announcement and the, the wise men. And we, we all know that story. But what a lot of people don't realize is there's so much more to Jesus than just the, the baby in the manger who went 33 years on this earth. There's so much more to God, to, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we think on these things, when we begin to celebrate Jesus' birth, we also need to celebrate uh, his death, his resurrection, and at the same time, and this is a good way for us to point that when, when, and to share with those that are in the Christmas season, that when they want to speak about uh, uh, the babe in a manger, that's a beautiful picture, and it is. It's a very uh, a beautiful, innocent picture of, of, of our Christ, of our Lord, of our God, our Savior. But we also need to use that as an opportunity to, to teach that Christ wasn't just then. Christ wasn't just right there in that manger, but Christ always was. He was with God in the beginning, as we have just read. Um, so Jesus was before the manger. Jesus was, he existed before the manger. Um, that's something we've got to wrap our heads around. Um, the next part of our lesson is Jesus as the Savior. Jesus as the Savior. Um as we have seen, God the Son existed at the time of creation and played an active role throughout pre-incarnate history. If the Son already existed and he already served as a physical expression of God, why did he need to be born? If the Son already existed and he already served as a physical expression of God, if he already was with God and was of God, why did he need to be born? Matthew, uh, turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. Get there. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18, uh, verses 18 through 25. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall, he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. And shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Um, again, another very familiar scripture that many people will read, and, and this is where we derive from this that oh Jesus came as a baby. Um, he was, first off, we've got to understand through the passage we've just read, Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit, not by man, but of the Holy Spirit. Um, you say, well, why, why is that significant that he wasn't uh, uh, created by man? Well, first off, the prophecy said he was going to, in verse 23, be, uh, as spoken by the prophet is what verse 22 tells, it tells us. Verse 23 describes the prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. There's only one way that a virgin brings forth the Son, and that's through the Holy Spirit, uh, God's incarnation through the Holy Spirit, to, to step down into, into man, to step down and become flesh, and to walk uh, in, a, in a life that was uh, marred with stress and, and strife and, and, and temptations and the things that we face every day. God stepped into that. God stepped down into flesh as Jesus Christ. Um, and again, the only way he can be born truly of God is and, 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 and be 
truly God and truly man is by Je- is, is by the Holy Spirit, not by man himself, because of the sin nature that was in man. Um, we also learn in this passage he's called Emmanuel, um, meaning God with us. That explains the 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 the, the, the um, name Emmanuel is his relationship. It explains his relationship with the people, God with us. Then it goes on and later on it says that he will be called Jesus, shall call his name Jesus, meaning God our Savior. That indicates God's purpose in sending his son. What was his purpose in sending the son? To save his people from their sins. God our Savior. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians chapter 2. I think I lost it. Philippians chapter 2, um, verses 5, again, we're, we're, we're speaking of, we're speaking now on Jesus as our Savior, Jesus as the, the Savior. Uh, G, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being born in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, and even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So what does this passage teach us? What does this passage uh, teach us about the nature of Jesus prior to his incarnation? Um, uh, well, it starts out, let's, let's read verse 5 again. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. So right there is the existence of Christ. That, that's 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 That's... God's word now telling us that Christ existed prior to his incarnation, prior to his birth. Um, and that confirms what we've, what we've been dis, uh, discussing this morning is that Christ existed in the beginning as well. That we don't, we don't uh, only think of Christ as laying in the manger and that's him being born in 33 years and that was his only stint in the book. Christ is throughout this entire Bible. Uh, Beginning to end, beginning front to front to back, and he still is today. Um, we also see that he existed in the form of God and the form of the deity that we spoke of. Um, we see his willingness, his oh, I'm sorry, we see his humility or his willingness to step into humanity. Um, he stepped down into humanity. He he willingly gave himself to. A, a sinful nature in which he lived a perfect life sin free um, he emptied himself um, to, to be to be this young babe in a manger to step into humanity uh, he emptied himself he assumed the form of a servant and it was born in a normal sense as we know um, and had the likeness of men and was found in human form this is the Christ this is Jesus, the Savior. This is what he's done for us. This is what we need to think on, that we don't celebrate just the babe in the manger, but we celebrate so much more that we think back on what Christ did for us. Yes, he was born in a manger, but he left the throne of God to step down. And he humbled him. He, in humbleness, came down into a sinful world to offer himself as a perfect sacrifice that, again, in the end, everyone could look upon him and say, well, he, he, we, they, they couldn't look upon him and say, well, he was a God above everything, so he didn't have to worry about it. And he didn't have any of the trials that we suffer, so it was easy for him. He came down and walked the walk, and he talked the talk. Um, and he left a, 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 a road map, if you will, a biblical road map of how to get through this life, of how to uh, uh, make it to, to heaven. But Jesus Christ had to be born of a virgin without 
because again, if it came from man, then it would have came from the uh, the Adam, the the the, uh, the lineage of Adam, and we all know Adam had sin nature within it, and it would not have been a perfect sacrifice. Um, the the uh, uh, priest of, of past, uh, we read through the Old Testament. What would they do? They would have to walk in and offer. Uh, 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 sacrifices for within for themselves, but then also offer sacrifices for everyone else uh, within uh, uh, their 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 kingdom, within their their tribe. They, these are what the priests had to do uh, all the time, constant, consistently. Sacrifices for me to cover my sins. Now sacrifices for all those that are outside. Jesus didn't have to do that. Jesus came and he died one time. He offered himself one time because he was perfect without sin, and because he was uh, without sin. Uh, 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 without blemish, that that sin uh, or that that sacrifice, I'm sorry, um, was enough to cover the blood of all man, to cover the sins of all mankind with with the blood of Jesus Christ, once and for all, one time. That's what Christ did for us. That's what we celebrate Christ for. Uh, it's beautiful. Again, a beautiful picture of a manger. We we we've been um, me and the wife and girls have, and Aubrey and Bailey have been uh, going to different places through our Advent. Uh, things and doing different things through Advent. Uh, we try to do something different every day that uh, uh, envelops, in, in involves biblical thinking, and uh, we do things that are biblically correct. Um, but one of the things we did um, the other day was uh, go to see some lights, go to see some Christmas lights, which a lot of people are doing that. We know that. Uh, but as a family, we went to go see some lights, and one of the things that we always look for, because we found ourselves doing this a lot while we're driving where we went to look at the lights was beautiful it was a uh, place called clifton mills it's beautiful um uh, i advise you if anyone has a chance to get out there to it i'm not getting paid for that but go do that um it's just something different but after we left there we begin to drive and look at other houses other communities that were decorated because there's one right down the street that was beautiful from this place and we seen multiple houses being decorated we found ourselves going by going oh look how big their manger scene is Oh, that, that manger scene is beautiful. Oh, I love that manger scene. Oh, they don't only have a manger scene. I mean, we were pointing this. We were looking for the manger scene. Um, and that was, again, that was beautiful to me because it wasn't just the lights and the Santa Clauses and the snowmen that were all blowing up everywhere. But it was the manger scenes that we wanted to be, we thought should be prominent, should be in the front. That should be the, the one thing that everybody sees. Um, and again, celebrating that is a beautiful thing, but to celebrate Christ for all he is, not just the babe in the manger, is what we need to focus on through our Christmas season. Um, this passage emphasizes his obedience to the Father's will and his death on a cross. Although we must be careful not to consider Jesus subordinate to the Father, um, he was submissive to the Father's will and fulfilled a specific role in the plans of the Godhead. Um, so in the end, what we read here, uh, verse. Let's read Philippians chapter two, verses ten and eleven again. Philippians chapter two, verses ten and eleven. We're going to read those two verses again. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So by Worshiping Jesus Christ by praising his name, by calling out on him who receives the glory. Verse 11 tells us God the Father receives the glory. Christ was in the beginning with God. Christ was the Word. And through him all things were created. Nothing was created without him. He was there in the beginning. And verse 2 of Genesis, if you read uh, again what we read, uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, said that the Spirit... Uh, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters when there were, when the, the, there was void. There was nothing there. It was a God and the Holy Spirit. Now, if, and if if Jesus is part of that, therein is a picture of your triune Godhead. Um, and we've read that He was there. He was in the beginning. When we think of the birth of Christ, we typically call to mind the passages in Matthew and Luke that detail the account of His birth. These passages deal with the events as they happened. However, there are many other passages that deal with the birth of Christ as well as the purpose and nature of his incarnation. And again, what does this all mean? That we, we are understanding that Jesus was more than 30 years on the earth, 33 years on the earth. Um, he was so much more than that. If we are not intentional in our thinking, we may begin to picture Jesus as beginning at his conception as a human, 
growing up and then upon his crucifixion, freezing in time as a perpetually 33-year-old man. But the Son did not begin at conception. He was fully God, active in creation, the plan of redemption, and communi communicating with the people of God throughout history. He was fully God, and yet he humbled himself, accepting the limitations, temptations, and struggles of humanity in order to provide the substitutionary atonement required to redeem mankind from his sin. Jesus has the form in which he appeared to his disciples between his resurrection and ascension. He still has a physical, glorified body. As God, he is not limited to or by that body, and he is the example of how our bodies will be renewed and sustained in the future eternal state. Again, there's a future eternality to this. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21. For our conversation... For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, praise God, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. There is a glorious picture of our eternal existence with God in a, in a glorified body. Um, So if, 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 let me ask you this, if Jesus existed as God from the beginning and he appeared in human form throughout the Old Testament, why did he have to be born? Why couldn't he come to earth as a grown man to fulfill his ministry? Again, there was a, 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 a prophecy given. That prophecy had to be fulfilled that he was going to be born of a virgin uh, uh, as a baby. Um, and there's other prophecies that identify the Messiah providing miraculous signs to announce his advent. Also, he lived an entire human life in order to sympathize. Think about this. He lived an entire human life in order to sympathize with our weakness um, as, as we've experienced through our, lo our own lifetimes. Christ done it. Hebrews 4.15 says this. I must move on. I'm about to run out of time. I'm sorry. Hebrews 4.15 We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. That's my God. That's my Jesus. Um, an atonement for our sins required the blood of a perfect man. Um, the book of Hebrews teaches that the power of Christ's atonement is found in the fact that his life was holy, innocent, and unstained, so that he, so that he had needeth not daily as his high priest to offer up sacrifice for his own sins. Um, Hebrews 7.27. Let me read this. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27 says this. In, 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 in relation to, um, to, to Christ, to who he was, 7.27, to who he is, I'm sorry. Who needeth not daily as his high priest to offer up sacrifice, for his own sins, and then for the people's sins, for he did it once when he offered up himself. That's Jesus Christ. That's the glory of God. That a man lived a perfect life, sin-free, um, was able through the through the blood, through, through the death and, and, and crucifixion and resurrection, was able to cover all of man's sins with his one sacrifice, with his uh, uh, humbleness to die on that cross. Did it, and to pay a price that he didn't have to pay, he should not have paid. But because of it, we have a reason to celebrate Christ this season. We have a reason to claim him to this lost world. We have a reason to explain what Christmas truly is. While the humanity of Jesus allowed him to die for mankind, his deity provided the power to defeat death. He rose from the grave and ascended to heaven. We are even told that he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. Uh, if we turned our attention to the study of future things, we would see that Jesus' role continues through what we call the consummation of all things and beyond. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is eternal. As he told the Jews in John 8.58, he exists, exists, that's present tense, prior to Abraham. Jesus exists at the beginning and played an active role in creation. That existed, because he still is. We see manifestations of the pre-incarnate Christ through the Old Testament. 
Then he stepped into time, into humanity, taking on the likeness of man and being born into the race of Adam. But again, he's not corrupted by the imputed Adamic sin. He lived a perfect life so that he could offer himself as a perfect blood sacrifice to pay the penalty for sin once and for all. Having satisfied the required payment, again, which he does not, he did not deserve to pay. He conquered death, he rose from the grave, and ascended to the right hand of the throne of God. That's Jesus Christ. I'll leave you with this. How will you think about the life of Jesus differently because of something that we've just learned today? Think about this. When we, again, I'm not, I want us to celebrate Jesus Christ. I want us to celebrate the birth because it, it, many people think that is the, the beginning of the end, but Christ was always in the beginning. When we, when we see the baby in the manger, when we celebrate that, let's also celebrate that he was also in the beginning creating all of this, that he was with God. When God was speaking things into existence, Christ into existence, Christ was with him. Christ was beside him. Jesus was beside him. And he offered himself through this, through this triune Godhead. There was a plan made that says, we've got to cover the blood of man in order for them to have any chance, any chance of making it, uh, of being, uh, existing eternally with us. We've got to cover the sin that has been imputed into them. And the only way through that is Jesus Christ offering himself the sacrifice. We praise him this season for that. So remember, uh, I'll leave you with this. Remember that Christ was before the manger. And use that as an opportunity to share with those around you this season when you hear someone bring up baby Jesus or uh, uh, we thank you, baby Jesus. He is so much more than a baby. And he was and still is so much more than a baby. He was part of the triune Godhead. He was not created. He was not thought of and then put down as a baby. He always was there. We've got to remember that when we look upon the the... the Jesus' birthday upon December 25th, the, this day that we celebrate, that we remember that he is much, so much more than just the baby in the manger. Thank you, guys. I uh, love you. I pray that you have a good week this week, and we'll see you next week. We'll have another Christmas lesson next week. Um, and I wrote it down here, the title. Uh, honoring, Christ, honoring Christ in Christmas is our lesson for next week. So be much in prayer. Again, some key verses to remember. Genesis 1.1. John 1, 1 through 3, when it begins, speaks of the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Therein is where you find out that Jesus Christ is the Word. And if God, if He existed here, that means He existed there. Share those with, uh, with the, your family members this Christmas season. Uh, it's a good way to witness.